Calcium is the most abundant mineral in the human body and needed for countless bodily processes. Unfortunately, calcium is also one of the most misunderstood minerals out there, with some people calling it the cure for health conditions such as osteoporosis and bone problems, while others see excess calcium as the leading cause for tissue calcification and premature aging. In this video, I want to clear up the confusion and help you understand calcium better by talking about what calcium is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about calcium supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what calcium is and why we need it. Calcium is an essential dietary mineral, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. The recommended dietary allowance for adults in the US is 1000 mg daily for men and women, while being slightly higher for lactating women and adolescents still growing. Just as a side note of how big a role calcium plays in our health, the body of an average adult woman stores around 1,200 grams of calcium and that of a man around 1,400 grams. So more than one kilogram in both cases, most of which is in the bones and teeth. Nowadays, scientists have identified countless metabolic processes that require calcium, which makes it difficult to describe them all. Let me still list a few of the most important ones now. First, it helps act as an electrolyte for your body's energy metabolism. Together with sodium, calcium is the main extracellular electrolyte, meaning it is found mostly outside the cells. This is unlike magnesium and potassium, which are found in higher concentrations inside the cells. Outside the cell, calcium's role is to stabilize the cell membrane and reduce its permeability. This is important in some health conditions, such as thyroid imbalances, in which reduced or increased cell permeability influences how much hormone moves into the cell from the blood. Next, it helps provide bone strength. Calcium can be seen as the main structural mineral in the bones. If it becomes low, one becomes more susceptible to weak bones and osteoporosis. Like I said before, most calcium is stored in the bones, around 99%, with the remaining 1% being distributed evenly between the teeth and soft tissues. Calcium also allows for muscular contractions. As you know, our movements are controlled by skeletal muscles. Well, the contraction of these muscles is controlled by calcium. When calcium enters your muscle cell, it stimulates the muscle fibers to contract. On the flip side, Magnesium, which blocks calcium, can help these cells relax again. Because both proper contraction as well as relaxation of muscles are important to health, calcium together with magnesium play a huge role in your overall well-being. This is also why the ratio of calcium to magnesium is so important. For example, when you have too much calcium in your muscles compared to magnesium, calcium may overstimulate the muscle cells, which is especially problematic in the heart where it can lead to a rapid and irregular heartbeat, which may be life-threatening. More on this later in the video. First, let's summarize the most important functions of calcium again. They are to act as an electrolyte in your energy metabolism, to help build strong bones, and to allow for muscular contractions and for proper nervous system function. Okay, what about good calcium food sources? The most famous calcium sources are dairy products, of course. While dairy has come under a lot of scrutiny over the last few years, I personally believe that quality dairy is still a very healthy food, if your stomach tolerates it. Just make sure that you do get the highest quality dairy that you can find, as it is very prone to hormone contamination and overprocessing. For example, while pasteurization makes milk safer to drink as it kills potential bacteria, the heating also makes the calcium less bioavailable for the body. So the necessity for it comes down to how clean your milk is, along with your personal preferences. Also, certain countries have outlawed raw milk and or raw dairy. So in that case, I suggest you go with the highest quality products you can find that has no additives. If you don't consume dairy, other calcium sources include soy, legumes, certain nuts such as almonds, and dark leafy greens such as spinach. However, in the case of spinach, Keep in mind that it also has oxalates, which bind to calcium in your gut, making it more difficult for your body to absorb the calcium. So please don't rely on one single food for all of your calcium intake. Okay, 
Now that I have talked about calcium's function in the body and its best sources, I want to talk about why exactly calcium, along with calcium supplementation, is so controversial in the health community. You see, the traditional view on calcium was that many people aren't getting enough of it, which could lead to all kinds of problems, such as weak bones and osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is especially a problem for menopausal women due to their lower estrogen levels, which influences bone growth. So when estrogen drops, a person may lose bone density. Since calcium is seen as the primary bone-building mineral, these women are often prescribed calcium along with vitamin D, which is a calcium cofactor. However, what often happens is that this extra calcium doesn't actually reach the bones and instead is deposited in the soft tissue, ligaments, and many other places in the body where it's not supposed to be. This is called tissue calcification. And since calcium hardens over time, too much tissue calcification can lead to dysfunctions in the body and premature aging. Unfortunately, a calcium excess often doesn't show up in blood tests, since the body actively pushes excess calcium out of the blood and into the tissue. So if you're reading only blood calcium levels, you won't even notice the calcium buildup, at least in the beginning. On the other hand, with a properly done hair analysis, you will quickly notice tissue calcification. It is very common, and I would say about 80% of hair analysis results come back showing some signs of excess calcium. Because tissue calcification is so common, many health practitioners now advise against calcium supplementation and instead will tell you to take magnesium, which is the main antagonist and helps lower calcium. This definitely makes sense in a case where someone has a clear calcium excess and needs to get rid of that calcium. That means we have two scenarios that we need to account for. One, a clear calcium deficiency. In that case, you would have to supplement calcium along with its cofactors. And two, a clear calcium excess, where you would need to avoid calcium and instead supplement antagonists. Unfortunately, to make things even more complicated, there's also a third scenario called biounavailable calcium. This means that you have too much calcium buildup in the body, but most of it cannot be used properly. So you have symptoms of both excess biounavailable calcium in the tissue, as well as a deficiency of available calcium in the blood. A good analogy would be that of a thirsty sailor stranded at sea. He has unlimited water around him, but cannot use it because it's too salty and therefore toxic. So what do you do in this case? How do you treat biounavailable calcium? Because of time reasons, I will explain everything step by step in a different video. The process is simply too complex to go over now. Okay, with that said, on to the final part of the video, calcium supplements. If you decide to supplement, how much should you take and which form is best? I usually recommend doses anywhere from 500 to 1,200 milligrams per day, but this really comes down to your personal preference and how you react to it. Make sure to split up this daily intake into two to three doses. Common complaints of too much calcium at once include constipation, stomach upset, or muscle cramps and twitching. This is a clear sign that you're not getting enough calcium cofactors, which I will talk about in a minute. While most calcium supplements are made of calcium carbonate, I generally recommend either calcium citrate or calcium citrate malate. The reason is that calcium carbonate requires stomach acid production to be absorbed while calcium citrate and calcium citrate malate do not. So you can take the latter with or without food, it really doesn't matter. Another good option includes MCHC calcium. This stands for microcrystalline hydroxyapatite complex. It's basically crushed bone from cows that already includes all the necessary cofactors needed to absorb calcium correctly. Just make sure to get a quality product that has been screened for contamination and heavy metals. Speaking of cofactors, calcium should generally not be supplemented alone because of the potential for calcium buildup that I talked about before. To avoid this, make sure you also get enough vitamin K2, magnesium, and vitamin D. K2 and magnesium can be in supplemental form, but I'm not a big fan of supplementing vitamin D and instead recommend sunbathing or cod liver oil 
for natural vitamin D. And there you have it. As you now know, calcium is a very complicated mineral, even though it is crucial to your health and well-being. Before supplementing calcium, always make sure to get your levels checked with a properly done hair analysis, and also make sure you understand the difference between a deficiency, an excess, and biounavailability.